Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. We've talked so extensively about dementia and specifically Alzheimer's disease with good reason. There are more than 6 million individuals in America who now carry this diagnosis. And let's be clear, Alzheimer's is a disease for which there is no meaningful pharmaceutical treatment whatsoever. And beyond that, we know that the situation is certainly getting worse with time. The prediction is that by the year 2050, rates of Alzheimer's here in America are going to increase threefold. Uh, again, for a disease that while we have no treatment for it, we know that there are relationships that open the door for us to consider in terms of keeping people healthy from a cognitive perspective. In other words, what can you do right now to help reduce your risk. We know that Alzheimer's risk is reduced in people who have good blood pressure, who've had a higher educational level, who are not obese, and who are not sedentary. In other words, people who are active. We know that risk is dramatically increased in people who have high blood pressure, in individuals with type 2 diabetics. And now we are looking at the research that uh, correlates Alzheimer's risk and really risk of many forms of dementia with an elevation of the uric acid. And I'd like to look at that a little bit more deeply. Yes, there have been a number of studies over the past few years looking at this relationship between uric acid and risk for developing dementia. This happens to be a study that followed people over a 12-year period of time and really asked this fundamental question, what is the impact of uric acid levels on the risk of dementia. You know, if we can determine how variables affect risk of dementia, that's really important information to have, especially, again, in the context of the fact that we don't really have any treatments for the problem once it has established itself. And this is a study that looked at about 1,600 individuals, two-thirds of whom were female. And that's actually uh, appropriate in that uh, it's the same ratio as we see with Alzheimer's disease, women outnumber men two to one. Uh, this study took 12 years to perform, and during the study, every couple of years, they would do a cognitive evaluation, basically, of all the participants to determine how their brains were working. Many of these individuals indeed had MRI scans, and basically, the rate of decline, risk of developing dementia, etc., was uh, looked at in the context of what their original meaning at the beginning of the study, uric acid levels were. They compared uh, these cognitive outcomes, the, how their brains were doing, uh, based upon stratifying the individuals from the lowest to the highest levels, or quartiles, since there were four of them, of uric acid. And what they found was when you compared the lowest to the highest, those who had the highest levels of uric acid at the beginning of the study had about an 80% increased risk over the 12-year period of developing dementia, all causes of dementia. Uh, there is specific risk in terms of developing actual Alzheimer's disease was increased by 55%. Again, this is the high uric acid group. And finally, looking at risk of what is called vascular or mixed dementia, that risk increased by 166%. Uh, that's, that's pretty dramatic. And again, this is the group uh, with the highest levels of uric acid. The question must be raised, why would this be? What is this relationship? What are the mechanics uh, underlying damage to the brain that manifests as cognitive decline that relate to having a high level of uric acid at, in this case, the beginning of the study. Well, we know that high levels of uric acid translate into things like insulin resistance, inflammation, and even have what are called vascular effects. Insulin resistance means compromise of various areas of the brain in terms of their ability to utilize fuel like glucose, inflammation, which is directly damaging to tissues throughout the body, again, 
in correlation with elevated uric acid. We know that fundamentally, inflammation is playing a very important role in the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease. But let's just look at these vascular effects because that's probably an area uh, that is perhaps less familiar to uh, individuals in terms of understanding how uric acid can be damaging to the brain and really to the rest of the body as well. Let's take a look at a blood vessel. And the blood vessels uh, have within them a smooth muscle. And to allow good uh, blood flow through the arteries, we need to have relaxation of the smooth muscle to increase the caliber, if you will, uh, of the artery to allow good blood flow. And this is what it looks like. We see that that relaxes Smooth muscle relaxes and it increases the caliber. We get good blood flow to the heart, the kidneys, and yes, and to the brain as well. We know that, for example, in Alzheimer's disease, there is a significant vascular component. It's why there's such a strong relationship between hypertension uh, and the development of Alzheimer's disease in terms of the risk. Now, this relaxation of the blood vessel requires the activity of a chemical that is called nitric oxide. We need to have nitric oxide and allow it to function in order to allow our blood vessels to open up and give a lot of blood throughout our bodies to the areas where that blood is needed, which is virtually everywhere. Importantly, so we need this nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is inhibited when uric acid is elevated. Now let's look down the barrel of a blood vessel. and Here's what we see. This is when uh, nitric oxide is functioning and uric acid level is normal. You can look at the caliber of the, of the blood vessel, but when uric acid is elevated and nitric oxide is inhibited, what happens? The smooth muscle is active and as such, the caliber of the artery is diminished and this results in reduced blood flow. But importantly, here's a bit of information that you might not be aware of, and that is, in addition, we need nitric oxide because it allows for the functionality of the hormone insulin. When we have reduced nitric oxide, yes, we have reduced blood flow, but we also have reduced function of insulin. And that's fundamentally important because that compromises the ability of brain cells to use glucose. Glucose is then accumulating in the brain and can actually stimulate the formation of another sugar called fructose. And the downstream metabolism of fructose is uric acid. This creates a feed forward process. So uric acid then as we have talked about, is associated certainly with inflammation. That's a fundamental mechanism in brain degeneration. And as we've just learned, elevated uric acid by compromising nitric oxide is also going to lead to insulin resistance. That compromises the brain's ability to use glucose. We know that elevated uric acid leads to dyslipidemia, which is a cardiovascular risk uh, marker. It leads to obesity as well. Uh, we know there's a strong correlation between obesity and Alzheimer's risk, and it leads to hypertension. Hypertension, which has a devastating effect on blood vessels and is a strong risk factor uh, as it relates to brain degeneration. All of these issues conspire to bring us what has been called metabolic mayhem. Me metabolic issues are the underlying mechanisms to brain degeneration. And this is so fundamentally important because now we know that indeed this relates to elevation of the uric acid. Well, again, there are many risk factors for the development of cognitive decline and even full-blown Alzheimer's. We've been talking about them. Things like getting active physically, keeping blood pressure under control, getting a higher level of education, certainly something that's been uh, compromised during the COVID pandemic. Uh, now we know that there is quite a bit of literature that shows a relationship between dementia and specifically Alzheimer's risk with 
uh, increased levels of uric acid. And we just explored uh, some of the proposed mechanisms whereby elevated uric acid is a threat to the brain. So again, get your uric acid level checked. We like to see uric acid levels at 5.5 milligrams per deciliter or lower. Having a uric acid level at 7, where the doctor says it's normal, uh, we don't believe that's necessarily good enough because that's a level that really only relates to gout. Get your uric acid levels checked. Do what you need to do to bring your uric acid levels down. Hope you enjoyed this information. I'll be back soon. I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. Bye for now.